Right, yeah, thank everyone for coming out. Um, like you said, uh, this is Brad Hood, Global Information Systems. He's a GIS analyst, and uh, my name is Trip Holderfield. Uh, we're Colonial Pipeline. I'm a GIS analyst and uh, the FME server administrator. Uh, quick overview of Colonial, what we do. Um, we're an interstate common carrier of uh, petroleum products. Uh, have over 5,500 miles of linear assets stretching from uh, Houston to New York Harbor. Headquartered uh, in Alpharetta, Georgia, and we transport over 100 million gallons of refined petroleum products every day. So with, uh, with all of that, there's uh, obviously a lot of uh, reports and uh, stuff like that that comes in from the field, and we have to, um, you know, so there's, I think, 25 to 30 different types of uh, reports that come in, you know, every day. And, you know, the challenge is take, taking all these reports, uh, such as as built change diagrams, surveys, inspections, and, uh, you know, actually taking that and uh, giving, giving all the data uh, geometries and giving data, um, you know, put it in the proper format to uh, enter into our enterprise geodatabase. And uh, staffing constraints, we, uh, we uh, have three GIS analysts in total, so as you can imagine, it gets a little bit overwhelming at times, so we needed a solution to help automate this. I'm gonna hand it over to Brad and kind of go over the. So, um, Global, we do software support for the oil and gas industry and present them with solutions, and one of our solutions is G-Forms. It's a field reporting software. So the guys go out in the field, they have a iOS interface, they can you know, get GPS points, change diagrams, do anything in the field. They do depth of cover, stuff like that. You know. So now we have that data, but now we get it, you need to give it back to Colonial so that they can utilize it. They're inside the company. So the field reports are broken up into templates, so there's a depth of cover, there's a pipe inspection, there's an um, anomaly mitigation. So there's a template for every kind of report there is. So, and in some, in some templates, there are subforms, such as a coding record. That, that subform exists in many different templates. So, the, the way to get, how do I take that data from all these different templates and push it to the right table? So, we were gonna utilize FME to create a chain of workbenches. We need, we need to manipulate the field collection data and eventually we're hoping to push that to server. So what we did is we created a group of workbenches that mimic the way they, Colonial groups their templates. So we have as built that's gonna be a change to the line. So CP, that's cathodic protection information. Facilities, right away general, that's guys out walking the right of day finding stuff. And then the first, that's actually the validation is the first one we do where we look and make sure that the data is valid before we ever try to push it forward. So this is what the workbench for the as built templates looks like. And they all pretty much look like this. We read in the, uh, we read it in the data at the bottom, pass it through, do some manipulation, and push it out. All those up at the top there are pushing out the as-built information so that we can utilize it later down the line. So one thing that happens in the as-built CERM is we create data that writes to a table. So this activity date, it has four to get that from all the different templates, ah, I didn't put it in there, has four different values. So each template stores the activity date in a different column. So after, you know, we use that and we, we utilize the um, attribute manager a lot in this workflow. So then we have a great group of submodules, and these are all the as builts basically, anything that has the potential to be in multiple forms, multiple templates. So this gives us a way, the biggest thing with the modules, it, 
if we make a change to the coding subform, we now don't have to go to every different template at the top and change those. We get to just go straight to the coding module, update that, it's good to go. I don't have to worry about checking off the list. Oh, I went to depth of cover. Oh, I went to Azabel. So. So, and that's about it. I know I talk fast. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm a rookie. And so, Trip and I are starting to work on our FRC, FME server deployment. Hopefully, we'll have that soon. And that's it. Yeah, seven minutes. Yes, sir. Do it third. Um, actually, I think uh, I think most of the reports are coming in through uh, our like colonial technicians. Uh, we do have contractors do work do work for us, but all the I think everything is submitted from colonial technicians. I couldn't tell you 100 percent on that actually. Most of the validations we're doing have to do with um, location, you know, because we're collecting a GPS point, and is it close enough to the line? Was the point close enough to go ahead and move that forward so that it's going to end up on the right spot on the line? Um, I mean, a lot of the validation for, like, material and all that is built into the G form because it's the drop-down menu. So, and then the way we do is once it goes through the validator, if it fails the validator, it gets thrown back to the technician through a workflow process. Any other questions? What mechanism are you using to sort of synchronize stuff that's already moved to a certain spot that's unique in that group? How does that sort of relate or connect? Um, the workbenches, if they need to go in and retire something, they go out to the existing data, look and see you know, if there's a coding record here. Is there a coding record I need to retire because I put a new coding in? That type of stuff. And did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I think, can you help me with this one? Because <laughs> you're the well, server uh, expert. Yeah, I mean, there's not, there's not really a whole lot of, uh, you know, differences. It's, it's really just a, a change in a few transformers from, you know, the, the uh, workspace runner to the FME job submitter type thing. So, I mean, it's, uh, when, when, once you had the workbenches built out and uh, running correctly, then the pushing pushing to server really isn't a uh, huge issue. We we just uh, recently, uh, actually two weeks ago, got a. Uh, Got a dev system up and running. Um, we're f we've only had uh, FME server for about two years, so we're uh, kind of fairly new to it. And yeah, like I said, we, we got we got a dev system up and running about two weeks ago, so we're we're starting to utilize that and testing and everything. I think the gist of the question is if Colonial dial sizes and we have a lot more third-party contractors collecting data on, on the right-of-way for us, will the data, will we be able to handle that? Yes, because we just passed G-forms to the third-party contractor, and now the data comes in through them, and, and all the same restrictions are in place as before. Yes, sir. What um, flavors of Asbil so for the G forms, most of the as built is only stuff that doesn't change the pipe. Like if we go and put in a valve or a relocation, that gets handled in a different environment. 
the data still gets collected into a G form, but it's a different G form. The, the as bills we're talking about are like coatings, casings, taps, sleeves, tees, stuff like that. Yeah, they, they collect us spatially and then we calculate stationing using that spatial data. We are in the process of working that out a little bit. It, it was before, we're looking for a better GPS solution for them. They're working on that. They're trying to nail down which one they're gonna go with. They have several different solutions out there right now. We're trying to get one that's uniform. Yes, sir. Not in the G form. Only, only the things, you know, like I said, where they change the pipe, where they had to do a relocation and stuff like that, then, they, then that becomes a drawing. A lot of times they'll come in as a, a lot of times they'll come in as attachments and stuff yeah. like that. And, and usually at that point when it's, when there's something that requires that, it's, it's something that really kind of has to be looked at manually uh, and, and somebody actually has to go in and look at it mm. in each, you know, individual case. The G form does allow for, case. sorry. The G form does allow for attachments of images and stuff. So they take pictures of what they've actually done. Yes, sir. Um, so he asks how the users interact with the workflow process of the G form, how it gets loaded in to move forward, and what were the what biggest challenges? Okay, so the G form, the te the field technician goes out, creates it, then it goes to his approver. If it's a if that's the route, that's the route most of those these G forms take. They go to an approver. The approver looks at it, validates the data, you know, it's what I want to see. He approves it. Then the validator looks for, so, and that changes its status within the GForms database. And the validator looks for a, that status and kicks it through the process. So I think for us, the biggest challenge was figuring out how we were going to handle it. Previously, this is an upgrade of GForms for this client. Previously, the data loader was um, XML code which was unmanageable because <laughs> it was tens of thousands of lines. So for us, it was just really figuring out how to simplify the process so that we didn't need one person who only, only have one person who understood it. You know? And the modules was you know, a good shot. I, think, I really like it. It's already come in very handy because as we've Im implemented this new version of GForms, the technician was like, oh, we want to change this. Oh, we want to change that. So now, I don't, now we can eat quickly up, keep up with them. Yes, sir. G form is our te is our te technology, so that's what we sell. <laughs> um, yeah, but I don't know. I've been with the company for three years, so that's all. That's what Colonial has always used since I've been here. So that was the product we developed to collect data, and we sell it to them. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. What do you see that uh, how does Colonial compare to more traditional competitors in the form set as far as the high speed speed and the high cost of doing it for a lot of the things that you have from, from the work set that you're collecting? Um, we do have a bunch, many reports we've built that look at that data that that are part of the GForms package. G, we have a G reporter that they can go in and query and see stuff and get data that they need to pass forward to their, you know, their regulators. Is that it? Thank you very much.